All right, good morning agents. This is Kevin Lauren. I'm the Director of Training and Marketing. And today we are gonna go through some sphere of influence training, which is generally my favorite kind of stuff to do. So we're gonna to touch on that. Uh, before we get into the training though, I'd like to welcome everybody to today's training. Good morning, everyone. Looks like we have all of our regulars here, as well as a lot of new faces. So welcome to anybody that's new to ARG. Uh, glad to have you aboard. Um, good morning, Andrew. How are you this morning? Hey, good morning, Kevin. All right. So we've got Andrew with Solar Reps. He's going to bring us up to speed with what's going on with the Solar uh, Reps program. But before we let Andrew rip on what he's got going for us today, I'm going to also bring in Cameron Alley from Clearview Mortgage. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning, Kevin. All right. How are you? I'm great. So uh, today we want to just start off with Cameron giving us up uh, the update on Mortgage World. There's a lot happening, so we definitely need to hear from Cameron. <laughs> yes. yep. yep, yep. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, take it away, Cameron. Yeah, so we definitely uh, have. Oh, let me share my screen real quick. Sure. Um, lots to talk about today. So um, obviously, the ten-year Treasury is sitting at three point four one two right now. If we look at where we were at. Uh, just a couple days ago, we were almost at four. So um, basically the last couple of days, we did have uh, yesterday, it, went, it kind of went back up. So obviously there's a lot of volatility right now, but today it came down another 22 basis points. So we've two out of the last three days have been uh, the, the two largest um, individual days for bonds uh, dropping since uh, bonds were created. So we've obviously got a huge, um, a huge helping hand in rates right now. Um, so, you know, the last few weeks I've kind of been sharing with you what I think is possible as far as uh, rate movement the next uh, few months, specifically early spring and summer. And it definitely has started off with a bang, uh, as we saw the last uh, about three days uh, with one of the largest drops in uh, bonds in history. So obviously what's causing this, I think we probably all know, obviously um, the bank failure the Silicon Valley bank failure, when something like that happens, bonds come down because people buy bonds to keep their money safe. And uh, people buying bonds is obviously what, what actually improves mortgage rates. It's actually not based on, um, on you know, Fed, on, on Fed rates like uh, your credit cards and uh, like uh, adjustable rate mortgages. Those are also based on prime. Um, but as we're speaking right now, it's still continuing to kind of go down. So obviously, uh, two big things pushing this, obviously, the bank failures. And secondly, is uh, the international news, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, yesterday, as far as um, a Russian jet hitting one of our drones. So I have kind of mentions, mentioned on here a couple of times. And actually, um, last time we spoke, I was kind of surprised that bonds haven't taken a hit um, because of what's going on in Russia. But obviously, with that happening, with the direct um, military equipment, with the United States, that's also kind of bringing bonds down right now. So um, lots of things uh, that are happening. It's just kind of what's going to, you know, what's the trend going to be? Are they are bonds going to continue to go down or are they going to be really, really volatile and go up and down and up and down? Obviously, what we hope is that they'll continue to go down. And I do think still we have a lot of room uh, for, for them to go down. So we'll see what happens. It all has to do now with what happens internationally and what the Fed talking points are. Is the Fed going to change, um, you know, what what they've been doing to stop inflation because it hasn't worked, or and now we have all these other issues, um, or you know, you know. So I guess we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, so there's a couple things that you need to know uh, in this market and with this rate volatility is obviously I talk about this a lot. Timing your lock. Um, you know, today you'd have almost a quarter percent better rate than you did yesterday if you lock today. Um, that's not normal for rates to move <clears throat> so much in a, a day or two. Um, so it's very, very, very important to time to time your lock and, and communicate with whoever's doing your loan because uh, it can save your borrower a lot of money and it can keep you in escrow. And the last year has been... Um, really very, very unique because we've never seen this much volatility on bonds. You know, it used to be like, okay, well, um, you know, we might wait a couple of days to lock your rate and you'll save, you know, 
you'll either pay a hundred bucks more or a hundred bucks less. Now we're talking, you know, a day can change it by thousands of dollars, right? Um, a day can change it by a quarter of a rate. Um, so it's very, very important to time your locks correctly. I also do want to go over um, FHA loans now. I did touch on this a little bit last week, but um, what FHA is doing, did you have anything to add, Kev? Or I, I hear somebody, I just want to make sure that. No, that's, that's okay, perfect. absolutely perfect, my friend. Okay. Um, so uh, FHA versus conventional right now, what do we know about FHA versus conventional? We know that FHA has always been a worse product. It might have a better rate, but the but the MI is higher. Um, usually the payment is higher. There's that upfront uh, mortgage insurance premium that you finance into the loan. So it's not, it was not a necessarily a desirable loan um, program. It was more for people with uh, lower credit who needed some help uh, actually getting in the home. Um, this is kind of just a breakdown of the differences right now. Um, right now, FHA, even somebody with really good FICO score, I would almost put them in FHA rather than conventional, depending on their down payment right now. And this is why, okay? This is kind of um, a bad example because this has nothing to do with California, but it, it completely um, breaks down how it works, right? So um, monthly income, right? 7,500, 7,500. Uh, DTI requirements for FHA is 55%. For conventional, it's 45%. It's really more like 50%, but um, we'll say 45 anyway. But an extra 5% that they're giving you on FHA, that helps a lot of people qualify, right? It's a lot more, uh, basically they can make a little less money and still be able to get the same home. Um, this is just kind of a calculation as far as like your the monthly debts and disposable income. So with the FHA, uh, they have another, you know, almost 800 bucks a month in disposable income when they use a FHA loan based on that 55% DTI ratio rather than 45%. And uh, the um, principal and interest, uh, FHA conventional, uh, that's just kind of breaking that down as far as um, the rate difference, obviously 5.5 to 6.3. Right now, FHA loans are in about the five range. Um, they have improved a little bit, obviously, with the rates dropping. And then this kind of puts a little bit of a picture in your head as far as buying power. So in this specific example, um, if, if this borrower went with an FHA loan, they'd be able to qualify for $418,500. With conventional, they're only qualifying for $276,000, right? So in the, in the sake of California, let's just double all of these numbers, right? Let's say that um, that they make uh, you know, 14,000 a month, let's say that uh, they're, you know, this is about 500 and this is about 800. Basically what it's, what it's doing is it's giving you almost 30% more home than you'd get without um, using FHA, right? And it'll be this, whether we change the numbers or not, whether we increase the numbers or keep it like this, it's just kind of a big picture to show you exactly what the difference is right here, right? Um, so obviously, you know, the, the more the house, the more comp the realtors get. So that kind of helps out. Um, but really what it's doing is it's changing up the way that, that with the buying power, the buying power has always kind of been higher, but with uh, mortgage insurance dropping on FHA loans, PMI is almost uh, the same or a little bit lower than MI would be on a conventional loan. And obviously you have that if you don't put 20% down on your purchase, you always have mortgage insurance, right? Um, and then one more thing as far as um, kind of uh, an advantage to having the FHA loan. Obviously right now rates are high, right? So let's say um, rates go down next year. They can do a streamline where they don't have to get an appraisal. They don't need income docs. They don't need to prove any income at all. They don't, there's not really any closing costs um, incorporated with that. And they can just bam, get into the lower rate takes like seven days to, to finalize, right? So that's kind of an advantage. Um, so, but that's kind of the difference as far as uh, FHA and conventional. So one thing I would add to that is obviously right now, since it makes sense to go to FHA, when you're submitting an offer, uh, you know, I would make sure that I was explaining to them, hey, we're not using FHA because this borrower has, you know, credit issues or they barely qualify. We're using it because it's better than the conventional. Because what I think is going to happen is a lot of the, a lot of listing agents are going to start getting FHA um, offers, and they're going to be like, "Man, what is going on? Why why is everybody doing that?" So it's important that you guys get that information, and that's why I'm sharing with you today, because uh, it kind of makes more sense to go FHA than conventional, which has never happened before. 
Um, so, and then one more thing as far as um, FHA loans is if you are submitting an FHA loan uh, on a property, you always wanna make sure that they don't need a new roof or they don't have foundation issues or drywall issues or anything as far as health and safety issues because FHA does look at that. So let's say you were buying a fixer upper, right? Uh, and you needed a uh, new roof, for example. You'd still wanna put 5% down and go conventional unless the seller was completely willing to fix that roof. Because what can happen with FHA loans is health and safety is like their number one priority. So if there's any issues with that house, um, the seller is gonna have to fix that before it closes. And let's say we get into a 30 day lock and it's not fixed yet and our lock expires, well, rate expiration fees have shot up way up and they're very expensive right now. So if you have a 30 day lock, you better have that loan closed in 30 days or you're gonna get worse case pricing and it might kill the deal. All right, so hopefully um, that kind of explains the difference with the FHA and conventional. Just wanted to kind of touch on that. And uh, then as far as, um, as rates, we'll keep you posted, but I, you know, as I've been kind of saying the last few weeks, I do see that we could, get possibly below 3% here on the on the treasury yields, which means conventional rates would be in, the, in about in the 5% range. Um, and then obviously we have seen the Dow Jones go down to 31,000 here. Uh, our low is 29,000 in September. And if, you know, obviously if, if banks keep failing, which I hope does not happen, we're gonna see it go a lot lower than that, which will also bring down bonds. So, uh, but that's pretty much all I have for you guys today, unless there's any questions. That is a lot to take in right there, Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff happening in uh, the last five days. That's, and and uh, sharing it in 15 minutes is, is kind of uh, a lot of info. But yeah. just, just give me a call if you guys have questions, as always. And That's the bottom line. So yeah. it, it is a lot to, to digest. And if, you, if and when you have questions about this stuff, Cameron's there for you guys. So. Don't hesitate to reach out to he and anybody else on the Clearview Mortgage Squad. Uh, appreciate it, Cameron. So, Thanks, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to uh, switch gears real quick here, and we're going to have Andrew Leon, our representative from Solar Reps, join us because a lot of ARG agents have been taking advantage of the Solar Reps program and making some extra cash. So bring us up to speed, Andrew. Where are we today? All right. Good morning, Kevin. Yeah, I've got a real quick solar update for everybody. All right. So we're about four weeks away from the implementation of NEM 3.0, which once again, that's new legislation that just passed by the California Public Utilities Commission. Uh, it's terrible for homeowners. It's They're going to make it a lot harder from then on out for people to save money on their utility bills. And we recapped last week. I mean, we saw what happened with uh, natural gas in many cases, that it's gone up 100, 200, 300% um, in just the last couple months. And many insiders in the, en in the energy industries, they all believe that by April 14th, that electricity might just follow suit on this. So kind of once these homeowners are now trapped on the grid with this NEM stuff that's happening, they feel like, that they're going to aggressively raise electric rates, just like they did with uh, natural gas. So again, how can homeowners protect themselves from this? Let's see, is my screen share coming on? Looks perfect to me, buddy. Okay. So what can homeowners do to protect themselves? Because this is definitely coming down the pike. You know, that's easy. They should get their property grandfathered in with NEM 2.0. They can go solar. This will accomplish several things. They can save on their electric costs. They can increase their home value. Uh, they'll be getting a fixed payment, as you know, when they go solar. That means they will no longer be vulnerable to these rate hikes, uh, just like you saw recently with gas. Um, and also, when they go solar, there's no longer loans. There's no longer title liens to jam you guys up when you eventually sell those homes. All right, so what is the best way for them to go solar? It's the Solar Savers program, of course. Um, how do they do it? Well, it just so happens they've got you guys, their friendly ARG agent who has the inside track on this. And I want you guys to know, you really do have the inside track at a time like this. You know, I'm hearing in the industry that these big, huge companies, like if someone goes directly to Sunrun, for example, 
these guys are simply not going to be able to get everyone's NEM applications processed in time. They're just way too backlogged. They're too big. They're too cumbersome. They can't really maneuver uh, at a time such as this when you're when you're down to the wire. You know, I'm hearing that even people they signed up last week or the week before are just not going to make it. And ultimately, those clients will be very upset. So with solar reps, we don't have those kind of issues. So we can access uh, the money like these, these large companies of Sunrun. We can fully uh, get their money. We can use it to ensure that our clients truly pay nothing out of pocket when they go solar but we use our own designers, we use our own installers. So we do have the speed and the flexibility that you don't find at these larger outfits. So we operate as what's called a channel partnership with Sunrun. You know, in the mortgage industry, that's comparable to something like a correspondent lender, where, you know, in many cases, the correspondent might actually have a little more flexibility than uh, the big banks in those cases. So, um, that's kind of the climate on that. And hey, it's really nice to see some of you agents now are getting very proficient at uh, at solar referrals. In, in fact, there's some congratulations in order here. Like many of you guys, Randy, Blanca, Paula Maria, Charles, Keith, you know, these guys are getting really good at their sales pitch. You know, and just a quick little story. Uh, last week, I had a couple of Keith's customers. They were on the fence. It, it just wasn't moving forward. I made one call to Keith and uh, yeah, I asked him to make a strategic phone call for me to help me get him over the finish line. And he worked his magic in bingo. Another two signed up for him. So he picked up uh, five grand on that. So not really too much new going on. I just wanted to let you guys know um, it's the perfect storm right now. You know, we right. have, this, we, yeah, we, we have a nice little pipeline going here. And again, the best way to make the referral is by three-way text, you know, like you see in the example over here. Pick up that easy referral commission for yourself. And again, I'll just encourage you guys, uh, be one of those agents to make this easy money for yourself here. Send in your people, get them in by three-way text. Again, as Kevin mentioned, it's just a terrific reason to get in front of your old clients or anyone in your sphere of influence. They're, they all know about this. They're all going to want to talk about this. They're all going to want assurances that they can get it done in time if they've been putting it off for a while. So in closing, Kevin, there's nothing really new to report. Uh, just a reminder that we're in the thick of the opportunity here. And as always, we're looking forward to writing the agents some commission checks. Absolutely. That's the name of the game, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Perfect. Well, Andrew, thanks for the update. Appreciate that. And thanks for the agents that are taking advantage of that and, you know, really helping their client out. That's, just, you know, what we're all about as ARG agents. We want to be a resource for our clients at all times. So this is just another way for us to do that. So appreciate that, Andrew. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to switch gears here and got a little graphic that I'll pull up here. So that and, and Andrew's uh, presentation is very apropos because today we are going to be talking about the, you know, marketing to your sphere of influence and, you know, what kind of marketing mix is ideal for, you know, marketing to your sphere of influence. So um, your sphere of influence is, is, you know, maybe you're not uh, clear on exactly what that means, but your sphere of influence is really anybody that you have had contact with. And this could be family members. This could be, you know, um, people that you've worked with in the past. It could also be, you know, just anybody that, you know, maybe lives down the street or maybe somebody that lives, you know, um, in your community. So your sphere of influence can be massive. Um, and as an agent, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're growing your sphere of influence and growing your list of email addresses, phone numbers, and names of people um, all the time. So if you can always keep in mind that you want to grow your list and you want to you know, uh, add more people to your, your database than you had yesterday, that's a really good goal. So, you know, first and foremost, you got to have that list. You got to, you know, our, all of our agents that are on program two, of course, have the agent marketing CRM or, you know, some of you use other CRMs 
doesn't matter what you use, as long as you are using a CRM and you're keeping track of all of these different people. So step one, create your CRM, get as many people on that list as possible, and then you're able to market to those people in an effective way. So we're always looking for you know, ways to contact our sphere of influence, be stay top of mind with our sphere of influence. So when you know, it comes time for someone to need the assistance of a realtor, we're the one they think of. So that's literally the that's the the ball game in a nutshell, right there. So uh, sphere of influence marketing mix. All right. So how do you contact these people and what frequency, right? So the new the monthly newsletter. Those of you who have been with us know that. I constantly beat the drum of the monthly newsletter. Everybody's got to have them because it's a very simple, at least once a month, uh, way to contact everyone in our sphere of influence, everybody on our list. It's very, very simple to do. And so, again, the, the, the work is creating that list and making sure everybody's in your list and updating the list. Uh, but once that's done, then you're just basically, you know, going to be taking our ARG content that we produce every month for you guys, and you're going to be able to send that out to your clients. So, and that's kind of like the base layer of sphere of influence marketing. That's like, if you're not going to do anything else, at least if you're doing that, you're having that little once a month tap on the shoulder to everybody in your sphere of influence and letting them know that you are doing real estate, you're a professional, and you haven't gone anywhere, and this is what you do. So um, step one, absolutely create the monthly newsletter. We have tons of trainings in our YouTube channel on how to do that, so um, we won't go into that specifically. But the second thing that you want to be doing to at least 10 people a month is send out handwritten notes, snail mail, stamps, old school, handwritten note to everybody, you know, at least 10 people a month, right? And so you want to rotate those. So obviously next month, you don't want to send out, you know, the same hand, you know, a handwritten note to the people that you sent last month. So you want to rotate those that get the note. Um, and you just want to, of course, make a note in your CRM. All right, these, you know, 10 people got that. Um, next month, I'm going to select these 10. And so, and it doesn't take very long. If to bang out, you know, 10 handwritten notes won't take you more than 20 minutes, you know, and it doesn't, you don't have to write a letter to these people. It's just a real, you know, um, and it can be very specific to who that person is, you know, um, so the, the, uh, you know, what you're actually sending them can vary and it can be nothing more than just, Hey, you know, hope you, you're doing well, hope you and the, the wife or, you know, the husband or whoever you're, you know, you're referencing, hope you guys are doing great. Let me know if I can help you guys with anything, or, you know, let me know if I can um, help anybody, you know, so you always want to be asking for a referral as well. Because it's not just the people in your sphere of influence that are going to end up, you know, being your clients. It's also people that they know. So, you know, reminding them that you're there ready for their referral is a really good way to stay top of mind. So that those are the handwritten notes. Um, then the hard copy mailings of your newsletter. So take that same newsletter and go ahead and, you know, send that out to people as a snail mail newsletter. So, and again, they don't have to get that every month. Um, I do have several agents that do that and they, their monthly newsletter is a snail mail piece that goes out religiously every month. So that's cool too. But if you can't do that, or if you just, you know, think that that's too much work, then at least select 10 prospects or 10 people on your, uh, in your sphere of influence to send them that nice hard copy mailing. And also remind them that, you know, you send that out digitally as well. So that, again, you know, sets you apart, makes you top of mind when those people are thinking about real estate. Um, number four here is social media, direct contact with 20 prospects. 
if you don't do social media and you don't have, you know, a bunch of, you know, social media contacts, then, you know, this one is probably not for you, but I know a lot of you spend time on social media. You spend time on Instagram, you know, um, don't be afraid to direct message people on, in your sphere of influence, you know, and it had, it might not have anything to do with real estate, but having that little reminder that you're there is really, really important. We don't always want to do that. So uh, direct media contact or direct social media contact with 20 prospects. And if it's not 20 and it's more conducive for you to do 10, that's okay. You just want to be uh, creating these systems in your brain where there's frequency. So frequency is the, the underlying um, you know, kind of uh, the great, the, the thing that pulls all this stuff together. Frequency is the thing that really is the glue. So, you know, doing any of these things once doesn't do much good at all, really. So the frequency is where you get that kind of, uh, you know, that, that extra boost. Okay. So, um, you know, directly contact people and it could be all, well, I'm going to talk about phone calls, but phone calls can also, um, I want you to, to also think about texts, you know, direct texts. So same thing. Um, you know, you want to be able to do divide up your list and make sure everybody on your list is getting a phone call at some consistent frequency, whether it's once a month, once a quarter, once a year. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about segmenting your list in a sec. But, you know, depends on who that person is and what they are in your sphere, that's going to dictate the frequency, right? Um, and I skipped over five, but five is the client appreciation event. So at least once a year, you want to create some kind of event where you're giving back to the community, you're showcasing your, uh, your real estate business and putting it out to the community and putting it back out to your sphere of influence and reminding them that that's what you do. So I've got a uh, kind of a fun little anecdote. Um, I had a physical therapist that um, I used for, for quite a while. I had some, some really bad back issues. And that uh, lady ended up becoming a realtor. So talk about sphere of influence. I now get and she does a really good job. She's a brand new agent, but she sends me, you know, and I was just a client of hers, you know, in a different industry, but she sends me once a month, a snail mail, hard copy, uh, you know, newsletter and a piece about what's going on. And then literally last week, she sent me an invitation to a client appreciation event that they do. <laughs> so, you know, these are just... You know, this is not stuff that I'm just making up out of nowhere. You know, this is stuff that works. This is stuff that, you know, and obviously, you know, that, you know, I'm part owner in a, a real estate company. I don't need her services at all, but I'm intrigued and she's staying top of mind. And so that's just something that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. That's the agent you need to be, right? Um, you know, I'll never get this person's services, but they are definitely getting my attention and they're definitely staying in front of me. So if I was just a random person, I would probably think about using her. You know, she was a, a, a very, you know, personable person um, doing the physical therapy and all that stuff. She was great. So when you think about your sphere of influence, you know, past clients in other industries, if you're in other, other industries, those are perfect uh, people to add to your list and make sure that you're putting this information out to them. So uh, the client appreciation event is a fantastic way to, and even if those people don't come to your client uh, appreciation event, obviously you're only going to get a, a percentage of your list to, to actually show up, but you get the kudos <laughs> for inviting them and you get that exposure. You know, I didn't go to this person's uh, client appreciation event, but I noticed it and I understand what they're doing. So um, just another really good way to stay top of mind. And then um, I will include this. We've run out of time, but I've included this. This is, again, our 2023 market strategy. 
And this is, you know, this is just the, the basic steps. We want to publish the useful information, and that's the stuff that we provide to you guys. You just have to publish it out to your networks. Send it out to the people you know. You know, if you want, share a little video of it, of yourself talking about that. Post that on social media, and then do the personal outreach. Call, you know, people in your list. Call people, you know, that uh, that you haven't spoke to in a while, right? So um, I know we've run out of time. The last thing I want to do is show you really quick um, how you need to segment your lists. So in our agent marketing system, let me pull that up. Here's Blanca's. In our agent marketing system, um, we have the ability to create different segments. So our lists, right? We can create our own grouping lists. So, and this is a really important uh, thing for everybody to do to, you know, create, you know, your own. So if you want to, you know, create a new uh, group, you just click the add new button and it's going to pop up down here. You give it a name. And so that way you're making your own grouping. It makes more sense to you and the people that you're dealing with. And so I really encourage everybody to create these, you know, custom groups. And then, of course, you know, when you have a client, um, you just need to make sure that in the agent marketing system, you put them in the right group, right? So, and you can actually assign multiple groups to these you know, to, to each one of your, your clients or each one of your contacts. So super important that you guys do that. Um, also, one last note before I let you guys go is uh, we did have a huge change with our Canva program. Um, so they are going to be doing a different billing for us. So all of you that are on program one, we are going to have to start collecting that $6 a month. And so I will create the product on our website. I'll make sure I get that out to everybody. If for some reason you lost your Canva account, just contact me. We'll be able to get it back. Not a problem, but that was a huge change. It was unexpected um, and, and it happened yesterday. So for those of you that may have had an issue with your Canva account, just call me back. Um, and then those that are on program one, um, just make sure that you sign up for that product so you can keep that Canva account. It's only six bucks a month. Um, and then that way everybody has the Canva system in order to, you, to, uh, to create all of your marketing materials. So that's all I brought for you guys today. Uh, I hope you guys get out there and make it a great week and a productive week. And I look forward to seeing you all on the webinar next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.